Welcome to Carl's Corner. This is Carl. And I'm playing on a new album here. This one's an updated Tommy Dorsey. A number I can't tell you until I stop the record and take it off and tell you the year and all that. It's not on there, but it's wonderful to be alive today, isn't it? Got a wonderful show ahead of you for you and for my friends on the podcast. Thank you for liking me and uh, tweeting about it. They wrote me a note here. It says there are a lot of emails come in from the last show on pet therapy. We had Bly Spencer on, doctor of uh, whatever the hell he does. He's a pet therapist. And uh, a wonderful response. We'll have to have him on again probably for a whole hour, not just the 30 minutes that we had him on last time. But he's real interesting, and he'll be back. We'll answer more of those questions another time. Uh, this is Carl's podcast, and today's show, I've got a fellow by the name of Jimmy Francis going to be on here and tell us all about you know, some of the hijinks that he'd done in the radio business. And uh, also, I've got word that uh, we've got a special caller calling in, somebody that's very important, and we'll wait till they call and have it on the show. But you're listening to Carl's Corner on Carl's Podcasts. Okay, hi, this is Carl. I want to take a minute to talk about my sponsor, CountryChef.com. They're the studio sponsors here. And, you know, on this crazy deal we got going called the Interweb, I don't know a damn thing about it. But I do know that uh, if I were to put the number out there and ask you to do me a favor, that you'd do it. So I'm asking you to call a number and talk to Pat at the owner of Country Chev and tell him, listen, I heard it on the Carl's podcast. Don't even have to buy a car. You're not going to go on any kind of list. You're not going to be anything like that. All this guy does, he loves the old-fashioned way of being a car dealer, which is on your time. That's why he's got the interweb all set up, so you can look whenever you want and buy whenever you want. He's not a pushy guy. But he's got all these cool deals he can send you. Uh, coffee cups and uh, boat key boat floaters, and they got contests and all that stuff. If you want to do it, if not, you just call and tell them, thanks for sponsoring Carl's Corner. I, I listen to it on the web, and it's wonderful, or something like that. His name is Pat, 1-800-947-1250. The number is one 800 Nine four seven, one two five zero, country chef, and ask for Pat, and uh, just tell him that you like the podcast, and that would be wonderful. And then, no, oh, listen. Before I go, I gotta tell you one thing that is countrychef dot com sold a car to a guy in Kansas, and this fella wasn't real particular with the people in Kansas. Any dealership that he had, he bought wherever he bought a deal. So he was looking online and found the exact automobile he was looking for at countrychev.com and called him up and said, look, here's what I want to do. This is where I live, and how's that, and how's this, and check it out. Well, he talked to Pat about it and they come to an agreement and the fella drove 680 some miles to come up and buy the automobile from country chevrolet he wanted to do it he had a trade in and it worked out to do it that way and he drove away with the car that he wanted i just know that there's deals happening all the time out there if you just look into it so call up pat at country chev and tell him thanks for being a carl's corner sponsor it'll piss him off but it'll be fun for me 1-800-947-1250 it's countrychev.com oh now the calls are coming in already for him <laughs> Carl's podcast uh, here today talking with uh, the Dutch man. He's a fella that we know little about, but we'll get to know here. It's one of my favorite songs. I want to hear this a little bit. Turn it up. It's called The Saber Dance.
Okay, welcome to Jimmy. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Carl, for everything that you do. Um, it's nice to be here on the show, and uh, boy, it's uh, been an honor to uh, work with you all these years. Well, let's tell, go back to the beginning of this, when uh, the Dutchman got me involved, and uh, what he did to, well, uh, well, let's talk about you. I'll interview you. That's fine. You can interview me. I'll answer your questions, Carl. Okay. This will be unscripted then. You won't know what I'm going to ask, and I won't know what you're going to say. Fine. Let's do that. Okay, you're a kid of uh, born in South St. Paul, Minnesota. You're one of 11 kids, and uh, you went off to school at Brown Institute back in the 1990s or so. I graduated high school in 1993, and then I went to broadcasting school at Brown Institute in 1997 and 8. Then you were in the real world being on the radio stations down in, uh, where was your first job? Well, my first gig, I was actually working for um, KSTP. I had uh, was driving Stanley Hubbard, and when I drove Stanley in the shop, I worked for Building Services, which was basically gophers for the Hubbards. But it was a great summer job, and uh, driving him, and got, you, you got to ask a question, you know, if he asked you a question, you answered, but, you know, you could, there was a little bit of conversation. But mostly you didn't talk unless he talked to you. That was the rule. So uh, after multiple times driving him, I asked him one day, how do you get into radio? And he looks at me and he says, how do you get into radio? And he picks up the phone off the console and he dials the number and he calls and says, Jenny, this is your dad. How are you? Great. Listen, one of the guys from the shop, his name is Jimmy Francis, he's wanting to know how to get into radio. I'll let him talk to you. And he hands me the phone to Ginny Hubbard, his daughter. And uh, I was driving his car, by the way. So I was driving a, a, a billionaire. Uh, and he hands me the phone to the cell phone to talk to somebody about a job in radio while we're driving in the car. So daughter said, well, you know, Dad does this once in a while. Just come in and see me when you're not driving and uh, see what we can do. My very first radio gig was board opping for the Barbara Carlson show. Now, tell people who Barbara Carlson is. Well, she was uh, married to Governor Carlson and quite an outspoken large personality with the emphasis on the large. Yeah, she was kind of a big gal. Yeah, so um, I was her board producer. Uh, she had a producer that would put the show together, and then I just a studio engineer, if you will. Um, you know, pushing the buttons and that kind of stuff. Well, you're still doing that today, aren't you? Well, somewhat. Somewhat haven't ever left that uh, backstage part of uh, of radio. But I started there with Barbara and um, Rob Pendleton, her producer at the time, said, you know, Jim, and I went by Jim back then because I didn't have a nickname or anything. She, she said, Jim, Barbara screams for a Diet Coke the same way she screams as if she was being murdered. So please don't let that interfere with how you operate. And he was totally right. He Every time she... Who's on the line? Get that person! Six people on there! Put these people on hold! And she screamed and like you were doing something wrong, but it was just, that's her personality. And uh, I, I learned quick on a Market 16 radio station, board hopping, how to, you know, keep things flowing and uh, uh, no dead air and making sure the clock was on time. It's very important in, uh, in that business is that uh, uh, keeping things in time, that's... Wonderful. We're talking with Jimmy Francis here. He's uh, somebody that got me involved in all this at one place or another. He's been in radio for a very long time, and he, a lot of people don't know, but you make a lot of, uh, how you say, prank phone calls. Do you want me You want me to give in my secret that I, I make? Yeah, sure. I want you to do it. Tell everybody how fake everything is. Well, Carl, come on. It's... These uh, things that I've done over the years are meant in radio to uh, drive emotion or get a reaction out of somebody. Sometimes they're on with me uh, in it. So let's say the morning show of uh, Greg Thunder and Cheryl on KS95 when they were on, uh, they would use me as a ringer or as a bit to get the phones light up about a certain topic. I either would create them or we would just rip them from the headlines. You know, I brought some audio. Do you want me to play some of the stuff? Sure. You have what you're talking about now? 
Yeah, it's um, the one I'm thinking of that I did was um, totally legit, uh, meaning they were on in, in it. And some of the ones that I've done before, the radio station, I'm just calling as a listener. I'm not even, and I'm recording it off the radio. So the stuff that I put out there uh, may or may not be known even to the radio person that I'm doing it. And I'll play some of those for you too. Wonderful. We're talking with Jimmy Francis. Uh, he goes by the name of the Dutchman, and uh, he's a radio uh, I don't know, fantasy artist, like Cinnamon once said on my program, called you a fantasy artist. That's what you do. So tell us again what this is. This is from KS95. Greg Thunder, Cheryl, and Ben Holson on the air as the morning show. And I was calling as a Northwest Airlines mechanic coming in when there was a strike for Northwest Airlines. Yeah, this is Hank. All right, Hank, hi. It's Greg and Cheryl. You're on uh, KS95. And uh, you uh, are one of these replacement mechanics that Northwest is training. Um, one of them, yeah. Right. There was 12, about 1,200 of us. And you came from uh, from where? Uh, did Louisiana. Louisiana. And now you're, you've been staying here. You've been kind of holed up at a Minneapolis hotel for the last month or so? Yeah, they've been putting us up here doing training, and uh, we've, we've been around. We've, we've got a base, uh, a hangar that they've been training us on, too. Hank, I think I can speak for uh, at least a, a few fellow travelers that we are a little unsure about the qualifications mm -hmm. of some of these replacement mechanics yeah. and that they may just not be as good as the ones that are uh, in place right now with Northwest. So well, that, the misconception there is too, but you know, they're doing plenty of training and we're working on all types of systems and, and you can rest assured that it's going to be well, as good, if not better, because you know, when people are in there 30, 40 years, you know, working at a place, they just get lazy and we're, you know, they, we, we, we we're ready to roll. You know, we're we're all gung ho, excited about it. Sure. Uh, no, I, I can appreciate that. Um, now, what part of the plane are you going to be working on? It's, it's, if this strike happens and you and these replacement mechanics like yourself uh, go to work for Northwest, uh -huh. uh, what part of the plane will you be working on? Oh, uh, all parts. Now, we're we're training on all types of, uh, of uh, parts on the plane, from engines to uh, wings to uh, uh, you know landing gear, because because we're not certain certain who's staying, who's not, what's going to be happening. We all need to be able be me in there quick. Right. So, um, for instance, what have you been working on yourself? Oh, well, today they got us working on uh, uh, in parts uh, parts of the plane uh, in, in that um, what we're doing is going through and identifying different parts. Like, for instance? Oh, uh, let's see. Like yesterday and today we, we looked at the chip detector and don't ask me what that does. Uh, we also uh, were taking a look at uh, the uh, ADC optional low oil pressure sensors. Uh, we're working with fuel systems, indicators, inverters. There's a bunch of miscellaneous accessories. Uh, they, uh, one of those ones that they got us trying to decipher here is the punamic pressure gauge. The what? Uh, punamic pressure gauges. I think, and I, I think and you're I, trying to say pneumatic. Uh, well, there's is a P, P in it. Is, yeah, it, is the P first? Silent. Yeah. It's a silent P, yeah. It's, new, it's pneumatic. Uh, All right, well, um, okay, well, go on. What else are you working on? Uh, uh, trusters. We got to uh, help them with the, those. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I guess, the what? The what? The trusters. No, the thrusters. 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 The, thrusters. the thrusters. Uh, clamp hub phase adjustable parts, um, ADC oil filter systems. Uh, we, we're we all, you know, working with every type within the, the landing gear and the engines. Uh, and... Uh, Boy, you know, uh, I guess we. One of the guys is telling me they were install, installing the uh, altimeters. All right, Hank, this is a little disturbing. Dude, no, it's not. This is making me feel good. Uh, Hank, I, I hope that's guy. not something you're working on because it's pronounced altimeter. Altimeter. Oh yeah. Not ultimate. I don't oh. think it matters how he says it. Just well, as long it, as he can no, fix I would it. like to think that the mechanic would know how to pronounce hey, the thing he's working Hank, on. Hank, quick question: You yeah. wouldn't be working on an airport or an airplane that's headed to Denver? tonight, would you? 
Oh, no, I, th- I think this practice when we got here isn't going to be flying for a while. Oh, um, all right, what else, uh, what else are you working on there, uh, Hank? Oh, boy, you know, just communication amongst each other, yeah. uh, a lot of... Uh,